sometimes I get like several emails or requests um, and then I know I should probably address a certain topic and uh, so I appreciate all the suggestions that you guys give me. One question and adjustment and guitar thing that seems to befuddle a lot of people and and for guys like me is kind of frustrating sometimes because I don't really understand the physics but I understand how to set up the um, the floating trim system on a Stratocaster. I mean some of you guys probably already know this but for you guys who don't, let me just start by saying this is the coolest design. I mean, it's as basic as it is. Vibrato thing and the Hendrix thing, that's all cool. We all know what it does. But setting it up is quite interesting. Um, let me just say, start by saying there's lots of different concepts. And uh, like I say, every guitar is different. Every set of ears is different. So some guys, let's start with the, um, with the setup. Most strats come with, this, with the uh, cover on the back. Now that you would think would make a little chamber in the back of the guitar, which might affect the tone. Um, sometimes people use five springs, sometimes they use as little as two springs um, or three. And another thing to consider too is that the springs are like a little reverb chamber really back here. And for I know a while like Exotic, Exotic has a sister company called Raw Vintage and they actually specifically made um, spring coils, little springs for the back of the tremolo that were a certain amount of wines made out of certain material to write, vibrate more. Because if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. That's Those are vibrating every time you play a note. So that might work as like a little reverb chamber in the back here. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube about this too. A lot of varying opinions. I'm not sure I have ever spent a lot of time doing that. I remember trying to find coils that would at least ring. Some of those go thud and they don't do anything. And some of them go boing and ring forever. So you would think those might resonate a little more, you would think. Um, sometimes guys like this, this the um, trim set completely flat against the um, the wood, so they can only depress and go down. They can't pull it up at all. That's probably better for intonation. Some guys like that. Um, but a couple of things to consider are as follows. Number one, if you just look at the physics of the way this works, um, I think somebody explained it to me one time. It's like if you had two trees, <laughs> two trees out in your front yard, and you pulled a piece of rope across the front of it and you had two people holding each side of the rope, and it was pretty much perpendicular to where the trees were lining up, the rope would be pretty easy to move back and forth. But if you bring it back, and you had the people at the ends walk back around where there was a, there was a tighter curve, tighter um, bend in the string around the tree, uh, maybe more contact with the tree, it makes for more, um, uh, more tension on the string. And that's kind of what happens with strats. Now, you'll notice a lot of times on um, Gibson humbuckers, I'm sorry, Gibson Les Pauls, Gibson humbuckers, Gibson Les Pauls, they do the same thing, right? This is, I don't know if it was a Billy Gibbons or a Dwayne Allman thing, but guys will wrap the string around the top of the, the, um, the tailpiece. Now, does it make a lot of difference? I'll tell you my, my history with this. Um, I did it because Dwayne Allman did it, <laughs> or I heard he did. So I was such a Dwayne fan that I wanted to do it for that reason. But I went on tour one time and I had my 57 gold top, which I wish I still had. And um, that's another story. But um, I had had my strings wrapped around the top of it for the whole tour. Now, when I came back in town, what did I have done to it? Did I have a refret? I had something done to it where I had to leave it at the repair guy here in Los Angeles. And I remember he gave it back to me with the strings strung conventionally through the conventional way from the back of the tailpiece through the holes up over there, which made for a steeper angle, right? Over the bridge, over the saddles. So this is pretty flush, I mean, it's pretty, just goes there, but if it was going through the holes, it would be a lot steeper angle. And I noticed immediately when I picked it up that the tension was greater. And it's probably because I'd had my hand on the guitar so much. So I have a theory that that's why a lot of players actually like it over the top of the set tailpiece. Now, same thing kind of applies to Stratocasters too. They're really finicky. Strings on a Telecaster and Stratocaster pretty much just break pretty even, right? But if you're going to adjust the tension to where the spring's at a different angle, then the tension of the string is going to be a little bit different, which might make enough difference for you to notice. And once again, it's a personal thing. But whatever you decide to do, these two little set screws in the back of the, of the guitar, you can tighten them or loosen them. So the first thing you do if you want to play around with this, get in the back of your guitar, a quarter turn or a half turn at a time, and do them fairly evenly. If I were to tighten these up, the first thing I would notice is that the action would come up, up like this, right? It would drop, it would tighten it up so the, the back of the bridge is going to be closer to the, um, to the body, 
you have to remember whenever you do those turns, even like a quarter of a turn, the guitar is going to go sharp or flat, which means you, you need to tune the guitar up because you really can't adjust anything else uh, if the strings are too tight or too loose. You know, just to, just play with it and see if you feel the difference in the tension. Everybody has a personal preference. I personally like to have enough where I can pull up about a whole step. Because if I do do a Jeff Beck thing, you know, that feels good to me. And also, it's going to affect where your tremolo arm lays in the palm of your hand. So that, you know, you can all spin that out and bend it like in the, in the, uh, in between a door and a door hinge in the door, in the door uh, threshold. I just where I've actually bent them before to make them custom to my, yeah, I like to be able to play chords and then have the thing right resting upon my hand. If it's too far up, I can't reach the chords. If it's too close, it's too close. So now we're, here's a limitation in that also. When, the more you lower up, the less room you have to go, go down because you might, act your, the block inside is going to all of a sudden what? It's going to hit the back of the wood if you have it. So, so these are all things. Every guitar is a little different. Every setup, you know, sometimes you'll find even fenders will have bigger uh, space in there, a little more space. Different blocks are different sizes. So all these things are all different. That's why I equate these sometimes enough that I've ever owned an old American car from the 60s. I just have friends who have had them. And they said one of the things you have to expect uh, when you get into like an old car like that is the constant uh, maintenance, which is kind of true with Stratocasters too. I mean, look, if I let this guitar sit on the wall for a couple months, I'm going to have to adjust the neck for the, the truss rod because with the climates change, with time, things sitting around, with pressure, if I leave the strings on it, things to have, you need to have a good Phillips head screwdriver. You need to have a, the right size Allen wrench so you can adjust the top of your saddles. And there's different size of uh, Allen wrenches to consider too. Um, maybe it's metric, maybe it's a, I don't know, uh, different years. But you need to have that tool ready to go. And you need to have um, this, the Phillips head you can also use to adjust the, the tension of the neck. But you get the feel for it. And I think it's more of a, it's kind of a bonding thing with your guitar anyway, right? Cool stuff. Oh, I just remembered something too. There's different kinds of bridges. The old traditional Stratocasters like this have six little screws and at the top of the screws are smooth. So that's kind of meant to be able to pivot smoothly on those screws. Uh, but sometimes they don't. So what I usually do, is before I even put the strings on and I have the bridge on there, I'll tighten the screw all the way down to where it pulls the bridge flat and then I just listen up about a quarter turn. That gives me enough play because I don't want too much play where it might like slide around and go out of tune but just enough that it can still pivot on that little fulcrum edge of the of the bridge. So I do that with each of the six screws. You tighten it up here, it's gonna adjust, the, it's gonna change things here. You adjust things here, you know, then it's gonna change the action. All this stuff, they're all um, interactive. Don't be afraid to get under that hood and, and work on your own guitars. It's a great feeling to do, and it's hard to really break a Stratocaster. I mean, you really have to sit there and crank the heck out of it to really do any damage. Like a voice, subtlety wins me over every time. 